Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey Betzelberger. Welcome. Hi everyone, so excited to welcome you to our tour today. For those of you who don't know me very well, my name is Kelsey and I am originally from Chicago. And my husband and I moved to Valencia, Spain last February. We're loving it, it's beautiful. And I have been taking quite a few trips lately. So this is one of the beautiful places that I am so excited to bring you to. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Godella. Godella is a town located in the province of Valencia, which is situated on the eastern coast of Spain. It's about two hours from Madrid and two hours south of Barcelona. This is a part of the Valencian community, one of Spain's autonomous communities. Specifically, Godella is in the northeastern part of the Valencian area and is part of the Valencian metropolitan area. It's approximately five kilometers or three miles northwest of the city. The town's proximity to Valencia allows for easy access to the amenities and services of the larger city while maintaining its own distinct character and community. When we visited, we took the metro from Valencia about 20 minutes, got off the train, and it feels like you're in a whole new place. It felt very small town, very quiet, not a lot of things going on. There was a local farmer's market, but it only had a few stalls. The air was really fresh. Everything was quiet except for maybe some crickets. The architecture was beautiful. Let me tell you all about it. So the etymology of the name Godella is rooted in its historical and linguistic origins. It has evolved over time and it was influenced by the region's history and the languages spoken in this area. The most widely accepted theory regarding the etymology of Godella suggests that it has Arabic origins. During the Islamic rule of the Iberian Peninsula, which we'll talk about shortly, Arabic was the dominant language. The name Godeya is believed to have originated from the Arabic word Wadi Allah, which roughly translates to the Valley of God or God's Valley. This name may have referred to the geographical characteristics of this area. As the Reconquista, or the Christian Reconquest of Spain, progressed, the region and its names underwent changes as a transition from Islamic to Christian control. Over time, Wadi Allah evolved into Godeya, as the Spanish language and Christian influence became more prominent in the region. This etymology highlights the historical and cultural transitions that have shaped the town of Godeya and the broader Valencian community, and it's an example of how place names can carry layers of historic and linguistic influences. The population of Godella is around 15 to 16,000 people. Here is the market I was speaking about. You could see how small this area is. Beautiful architecture, big expansive sidewalks and streets, but not a lot going on in terms of things to do or the, the busyness of the market. We did get to sample some excellent fruits and vegetables as well as a really delicious olive stand that had some delightful choices as well as a homemade food section from a local chef who made the most delicious Japanese curry and olive oil cake mostly from ingredients from her garden. Oh, delicious. So speaking of the town's history, let me give you a little bit more idea as to where we are today. So like many of the places in Spain, Godella has a rich and extensive history. In terms of ancient origins, this area around Godella has been inhabited since prehistoric times. Archaeological findings indicate the presence of Iberian and Roman settlements right here. Um, this does mirror the broader historical narrative of the Iberian Peninsula, but the presence of ancient settlements in this area uh, played a vital role in shaping this culture and historical landscape. During the Islamic rule of the Iberian Peninsula, Godea was integrated into the Islamic territory and known as Godel La. This period was characterized by a flourishing of Islamic culture and architecture in the region, leaving an indelible mark on its history. 
The Christian reconquest in the 13th century, this Sago de re returned to Christian control. This was a pivotal moment in the town's history, and it was marked by a period of significant change, as the Reconquista not only altered the political landscape, but also influenced the culture and the religious identity of this region. Throughout the Middle Ages and into modern times, Godea continued to evolve. It experienced periods of economic growth, cultural transformation, societal development, and the town's history is a tapestry woven with threads of medieval fortifications, religious institutions, and the dynamic interplay of different cultures. In contemporary history, Godea has transformed into a suburban community within the Valencian metropolitan area, which is sort of like what we're seeing here. A lot of houses, gardens that are nicely sculpted, areas for cars, a lot of parks, and even this is a um, this is a local neighborhood. It has this pretty little garden path you can see here. And look at all of the beautiful flowers. <laughs> My friend is saying how amazing this is. Um, but right next to it is this public workout section. We'll see it in a second, but it's where anyone can go and use these machines for absolutely free. They're, they're public. They're literally on the sidewalk. So a very cool area that definitely promotes community. Here they are. It definitely promotes community and, um, and bonding with your neighbors, allowing your kids to all play together. It felt very safe, although I have to say most of, most of Spain feels very, very safe, especially compared to where I came from. But this is something that I had never, that I have never seen outside of Europe. So very cool. You can see this is a, a public elliptical. And then there are some, some other uh, workout equipment that is, again, free to use. Anyone can, can come by as they're on their way home from work and just do a 10 minute workout and then go home and hang out with the kids. Or even better, bring the kids with you. <laughs> Um, so, some interesting bits about this area here. So, <clears throat> the cultural heritage here, including the historical architecture and landmarks, this is very important to this region. Um, you'll find a mix of this modernity that we're seeing here, as well as the more traditional aspects like the type of architecture and the Islamic influences. There's also some really tasty Spanish cuisine. Now there's paella and tapas and other regional dishes that we'll actually talk about here shortly. But Godea, as you can see from the market, is a really tasty place to explore. The Valencian community here is known for its stunning Mediterranean coastline. Now, mind you, we're not right on the coast, but the proximity to the sea allows for a lot of seafood and a lot of really delicious vegetables coming in from this this Mediterranean climate. Godea has evolved into this suburban community now so it, it's a very attractive place for people who want to balance the tranquility of a smaller town with access to the amenities of a larger city like Valencia. It's a very attractive place to live. There are also some local festivals here. So there are especially religious festivals, also cultural events. So I know we've talked about the Semana Santa or Holy Week, as well as the Fias celebration that we have in the city of Valencia. All of these are celebrated here as well. Not to mention fun surprises like we encountered here, like this one.
what a fun surprise to find while we were sitting at a cafe enjoying the local olive oil cake. Has anyone had olive oil cake? This is so delicious. It had a slight hint of citrus to it. I think it was local oranges that she used, but oh my goodness, it's very, uh, very moist and very soft and had a really nice flavor of the actual olive oil. I myself am not a huge sweets or cake person, which I know is blasphemy, right? But this, I really, really enjoyed. It seemed to be a little bit on the lighter side, even though, of course, it was quite heavy in terms of calories. But as they say here, it's olive oil, it's liquid gold, so <laughs> it's basically fruit juice. I hope you brought a snack, because now I have some interesting facts for you about olives. Olive oil production dates back to ancient civilizations, such as the Greeks and the Romans. They used stone mills to crush olives and press the oil. Olive trees are known for their longevity. Some olive trees are believed to be thousands of years old, with one of the oldest olive trees being the olive tree of Vauve in Crete, estimated to be over 2,000 years old. In ancient times, olives were often crushed using large stone or wooden presses. Today, modern equipment, such as the hydraulic presses and centrifuges, are often used for extraction. Olive oil comes in various grades, including extra virgin, virgin, and refined. Extra virgin olive oil is the highest quality and is cold pressed without heat or chemicals. It tastes the best and it's the best for you. The timing of olive oil harvest is crucial. Olives are typically harvested in the late fall to early winter when they are at their ripest. Traditionally, olives were hand-picked from trees, but today, modern farmers use mechanical shakers to harvest olives more efficiently. Olive oil is produced in many countries, with Spain, Italy, and Greece being some of the largest producers. Each region has its own unique olive varieties and flavors. Like wine, olive oil can have various flavor profiles, depending on the type of olives used and the region of production. Tasting notes might include fruity, peppery, or grassy. Olive oil holds cultural significance in Mediterranean cuisine and beyond. It's a staple ingredient in dishes like salads, pastas, and other Mediterranean dishes. Olive branches and olive oil have been symbols of peace, prosperity, and victory in various cultures throughout history. Last but not least, some regions with a strong olive oil tradition like Tuscany and Italy have museums dedicated to the history and production of olive oil. Olive oil's journey from ancient times to modern day kitchens showcases its enduring popularity, versatility, and its role in both culinary traditions and health conscious lifestyles. We're now heading out into more of the rural areas, into more of the farmland here. You are welcome to explore the small dirt paths that are in these towns, and it often gives you a unique insight into what life is like in, in, in terms of local culture. So it's very interesting to explore this area. So let me give you a little bit of an idea about the crops that are grown in this region while we experience the beautiful flowers and all of the, uh, the crops that are currently growing. Um, in this Valencian community, especially in areas near Godella, the production of citrus fruits, particularly oranges and mandarins, is a a popular crop to grow here. These fruits have thrived in the Mediterranean climate and they are a significant part of this local economy. This region is also known for its rice cultivation. Uh, rice is commonly used here to make paella, the traditional Spanish yummy dish that is served during lunchtime, as well as olive trees. They are cultivated here for olive oil production, and the Mediterranean climate is ideal for this cultivation. This area produces particularly high quality olive oils. There are also almond trees. These are harvested both for culinary and industrial purposes, as well as a range of vegetables. So you have tomatoes, peppers, cabbage, artichokes, beans, and the, all these crops benefit from the mild winters and the sunny summers. 
There's also herbs that grow in this area, so rosemary and lavender and thyme, which are used for both culinary and medical purposes, as well as it makes the whole place smell good. <laughs> So not a bad place to experience the diversity of agriculture here. Um, the region's favorable climate and fertile soil play a significant role in helping this economy and culture grow, especially contributing to the culinary traditions of the Godea region. While we explore, let's talk about some fun facts about Spain. We'll explore these on a more in-depth basis soon. The siesta culture. Spain is known for its siesta tradition, where many businesses and shops close in the afternoon for a few hours to allow people to rest and escape the heat of the day. And in Spain, there is a lot of heat. <laughs> the flamenco dance. Flamenco is a traditional type of Spanish music and dance style that originates from the Andalusian region. It's famous for its passionate, raw and expressive performances. La Tomatina! Some of you might have gone to the Tomatina festival with me, but let me tell you a little bit more about it. Spain hosts the world's largest food fight, as they say, called La Tomatina. And as you can guess, participants are throwing tomatoes, hence the name, at each other in the small town off Valencia, called Buñol. Bullfighting. Although controversial, bullfighting is a traditional Spanish spectacle, with the most famous events being held during the running of the bulls in Pamplona. Multiple languages. Spain has several official languages, including Spanish or Castilian, Catalan, Galician, and Basque. Catalan is spoken in Catalonia, while Basque is unique to the Basque country. Paella. Paella is a popular Spanish dish originating from the Valencian region. It typically includes rice, saffron, and a variety of ingredients. There's seafood, but there's also chicken and snails, or simply vegetables. A diverse geography. Spain has a diverse landscape from beautiful beaches along the coastlines to the mountainous regions of the Pyrenees and the Sierra Nevada. It also has semi-arid deserts like the Tabernas Desert. Famous artists. Spain has produced many renowned artists, including Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dalí, who made significant contributions to the world of art. La Sagrada Familia. As many of you know who came with me on our La Sagrada Familia tour, this famous basilica in Barcelona, designed by architect Antoni Gaudi, has been under construction since 1882, and it's still not even finished. It is an architectural masterpiece. The link to this tour can be found in the information below this video in case you'd like more information on this amazing cathedral. Tapas. Tapas are a beloved Spanish culinary tradition where small flavorful dishes are served alongside drinks. And in Spain, there are many drinks. It's a great way to sample various Spanish foods. These are just a few of the fascinating facts and history about Spain. A country rich in culture, history, and tradition. The San Bartolomé Church, or the Iglesia de San Bartolomé, this is a historic church in this prominent area of Godea, and it showcases the beautiful Gothic and Baroque elements. It is definitely worth a visit to admire the design and learn about its history, but while we're here, let me tell you a little bit about this beautiful location. So the San Bartholomew Church showcases a blend of architectural styles, and the combination of these styles gives it this unique and very striking appearance. You can see when we visited, there was a service going on. We weren't sure if it was a celebration of some sort as well. 
But either way, lots of people and a lot of fun to be a part of. So this church has a rich history that dates back centuries. Originally built in the 18th century, it has served as a place of worship and a focal point for the local community for generations. The historical context of this church is intertwined with the broader history of Godea and the surrounding region. The Gothic elements of this church include the pointed arches, ribbed vaults, flying buttresses, all characteristic of the Gothic architectural styles. These architectural elements contribute to the church's overall grandeur and historical authenticity. The Baroque influence is also something to be of note. It is evident in the ornate decorations and embellishments. Baroque architecture is known for its elaborate detail, and you can expect to find intricate stucco work, gilded altars, and decorative motifs inside churches with a lot of Baroque influence. Like many churches in Spain, the San Bartholomew Church plays a central role in the religious life of the community. It hosts religious ceremonies, festivals, and events, all of which are important to the local population. The interior of the church features religious art, paintings, sculptures, and artifacts that provide insight into the local religious and cultural traditions as well. Depending on the time of your visit, or any ongoing events or services, you might be able to explore the interior. When we visited, as you saw, it was open, but we weren't able to fully go inside and explore the way that we wanted to due to the ongoing event. Many historic churches, like the San Bartholomew Church, undergo preservation and restoration efforts to maintain their architectural and historical integrity, this church in Godea included. Local communities and heritage organizations often work together to ensure the continued existence of these cultural landmarks. Earlier, I promised you some details on the siesta, so let's get into it and explore this relaxing Spanish tradition. The siesta is a short afternoon nap, or rest, and it has its roots right here in Spain. Its name comes from the Latin word sexta, which means the sixth hour, counting from sunrise, as it was traditionally observed around midday. The siesta became ingrained in Spanish culture due to Spain's climate, where daytime temperatures around midday can soar, especially in the southern regions. Taking a break during the hottest part of the day helped people avoid the scorching sun. One of the primary reasons for the siesta was to escape the oppressive midday heat, allowing people to rest, eat, and recharge before returning to work. The siesta also influenced the daily rhythm of life in Spain, with businesses and shops traditionally closing for a few hours in the afternoon to accommodate this tradition. In recent years, Spain has seen changes in its siesta culture. Urbanization, modern work patterns, and a desire for greater work efficiency have led to a decline in the practice and the tradition of the siesta. It can vary widely, region to region. In some areas, it's still quite common, while in others, it's less prevalent. Napping benefits, though, have been proven here in Spain. The siesta's benefits include improved alertness and productivity, as a short nap can help combat afternoon drowsiness. While the siesta is most closely associated with Spain, Midday napping is a common practice in many cultures worldwide, such as a power nap in Japan, China, and even in the U.S. Some Spanish towns and regions celebrate the siesta with festivals, games, and contests dedicated to napping. Now that is a contest I would like to join. In contemporary Spain, however, the, the traditional siesta is often shorter than in the past, typically only lasting 20 to 30 minutes. It's still considered a valuable break during the workday, but now it's more focused on spending time with your family and recharging rather than actually going to sleep. The siesta is a cultural tradition rooted here in Spain, historically important for escaping the midday heat. While its observance 
has evolved over time due to changing lifestyles, it still remains a fascinating aspect of Spanish culture and a topic of interest for those exploring the country's traditions and for those who are a little drowsy. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you all so much for joining me in this Godea town in the Valencian area. I look forward to seeing you on the next tour. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for your donations, for your tips, for your PayPal's. And as always, thank you for being a part of my traveling family. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye everyone. Don't forget to follow and like this video for more with me, Explore with Kelsey. For more of my tours, please see my profile on Buy Me A Coffee. And under the shop, you will see all of my future live tours, recaps, live concerts, and recorded versions of all past events as well available for purchase. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Explore With Kelsey. Thank you all for joining me. See you soon.